Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Uh, now this is a Vim roles section. Uh, now the next topic is a Vim roles. Now what is a Vim roles uh, like in uh, like um, like in in the process? So roles is an actor basically who is going to take certain action on those work items. Okay, so uh, like for example. Uh, there is one document where uh, the AP processor needs to take the action on it. So AP processor is one of the role in the system. There could be a case where uh, they want to refer it to the to the buyer uh, or to the requester, um, and they need certain action, certain information from the buyer. Then they can refer it to them and. Uh, so that is also a kind of a roles. Sorry, someone said something. To root the vendor master team and tag team. Sorry, I just like your voice is low. I can't hear you. Can you repeat again? To root it to vendor master and uh, tag team uh, for the exception. So we can add those roles. Yes, yes. I'm just coming to that point. Okay, so uh, so like uh, if I want to take certain information from buyer, uh, so those are the roles. Uh, like so, th uh, so if I want to take certain information from the specific users or uh, uh, like, then then we create a roles in the system. So like as uh, as you mentioned, yes, uh, like uh, we can have roles like AP team. Again, it could be indexer, third, it could be buyer, fourth, it could be MDM team, fifth, it could be text team, sixth, it could be info provider. Okay, so there are various roles in the VIM system, and why we create our roles in the system is whenever I need a certain information from the relevant team, uh, then we uh, like if we don't create a roles, then we can't uh, like uh, like send those workflows to them to uh, and asking them to provide certain information. So as I said earlier, that one of the biggest advantage of Vim is to uh, like to have to and fro communication uh, between. Um, uh, between the various people within the VIM system and no one needs to go outside of the VIM at all. Okay, so so this is what we call it as a roles in the system. So when I'm saying roles basically here, the AP team has a role. So there could be a chance like 10 users can be assigned under team Wimber. Okay, so multiple users can be assigned under a one role. That is what we call it as a roles in the system. So the same thing for indexer also. Multiple users can be can be there uh, who can uh, like who is responsible if anything is not being. Uh, or, or the mandatory information are not coming in the system, so they need to just index those values and all. Uh, then we can have a buyer role. Buyer role is something basically who has created the purchase order and we need certain information from them. So that role basically we call it as a buyer role. Then the fourth one is the MDM team. So now uh, like there is some master data issue basically like in the vendor master or material master anything. So we can just uh, refer it to them by asking them uh, to provide the correct information. Uh, like if, if anything vendor need, need uh, vendor needs to be created or something uh, and that uh, with the same vendor name, there is no data available by indexing. So at that point of time, we can refer it to the MDM team by asking them uh, like to create the vendor master and provide the vendor code or 
if I want to do any modification, we feel that uh, certain information which is available on face of invoice and uh, and in SAP database tables, if it doesn't matches, then again, like we can refer it to the MDM team by correcting those informations in the SAP database tables. So these are few of the examples basically which I am giving. Uh, so that is the MDM team basically. So to whom we can refer it. So MDM team can also be created as one of the role in the system. The next one is a text team. So if there is any information which is required from the text team in terms of uh, text code and all, so then we can uh, create, we can have a separate roles for the texting also. Uh, the next one is an information provider, info provider role. Basically, we can have it. Uh, this is something basically if I want um, uh, certain information from the different users. Okay. Uh, so there is no extra dedicated pupil basically who can work on it. So like for example, if I want to refer some information, ref, uh, refer to the scanning team to rescan the invoice or something like that or need some certain information, then we can use the concept of the info provider as a role. So we can create it in the system as a role. So these are the roles in the system. So the, the actor uh, or the person who is going to take the action on those work items that is what we call it as a roles and we can have a different roles in the system and this is one of the few of the roles basically which we can have it in the system. Any questions anyone? Uh, can you explain the difference between AP team and indexer? Okay. See AP team and indexer both can be different or both can be same also. Uh, it is it is more about like how the business uh, has designed it. Indexers are responsible to enter the mandatory information. AP team is responsible to process the invoices. Okay, thank you. But it can be both. There could be a chance that in organization they don't want to do a bifurcation between AP team and indexer, right? Uh, yeah. Right. So then it is it is up to them. So it is. I'm just giving an example here. Yeah, generally we whenever we check the status of the invoices, we generally it should be showing as indexing created. Uh, so is it comes with the rule? What indexing created? I mean document DP document status. What is indexing completed? Not indexing, it shows as an indexer. In a, uh, as a in a role, you are saying? No, I'm not sure about that. What exactly? That's the reason I have a question mark on that. So sometimes a document DP document shows as a created. Sometimes it shows as indexed. That sometimes is a it that is Sorry? a status. Okay. That is a WIM document status. Like the posted is one of the status. The same way created and indexed is one of the status in WIM. So created and indexed status difference. Main difference is created is the one basically. Uh, which is created and there are certain mandatory information which is missed. Index status will come when uh, all the mandatory information are entered in the WIM screen. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is all about the role concept. Uh, now we will uh, go more in deep. Uh, what exactly, how do we create it and what are the different concepts in the WIM and all, sorry, uh, con concept and WIM roles. So to create a role in the WIM, okay, the first step is to create a role. Create a role in the WIM with transaction code slash OPT slash CP underscore CP underscore 9CX5. So to create a role in the system, this is the transaction code to use it. Obviously, just add slash n before this. So this is uh, this is a transaction co uh, code to create a role with the description. With the description as in like the AP team, right? So whatever the unique ID we are creating it, so we should provide the description. Now, whenever we create a role in the system, so there comes one again the technical term which we need to remember it, which is a product code. Now, what is it product code? So 
there are three important product codes in vim which is 005 second one is lix and third one is pir so 005 product code is something basically uh, which we use uh, like whenever we create a role we create a under the product code okay so when i'm saying we create a role under the product code so there will be some significance reason behind it so till invoice posting okay till your sap document gets created we use the a uh, product code 005 so whenever like for example you are having a different ap team one ap team who is responsible to post the invoice another ap team who is responsible in terms of communicating with the buyer when the invoice is in block status okay so if we are having a separate team and all that is a major purpose basically we create a role under the product code so till invoice posting we use 005 product code and for invoice blocking we create a role under product code lix okay so whenever we create a role till invoice posting sorry whenever we create a role under product code 005 so like it means like we are like that particular role or the users are responsible till invoice posting once invoice is posted then their roles and responsibility are over and if we are having a separate team basically uh, so we can create a separate product uh, like we can uh, assign the users to a separate product uh, with a separate product code lix for example now majority of the things basically the most important as you can also understand it obviously the 99% cases are related to the 005 product code only right because vim is what vim is for what vim is still invoice posting majority of the all the invoices will not be in the block one right the third one is the is for the parking process which is something uh, like there is a concept in sap to park the invoices if, i don't know like if you guys know about miro and fb60 transaction code so whenever we post the invoice now what is a traditional ways of working uh, like whoever is using sap so whenever we do the implementation in sap mm or sap fico so where we always recommend client whenever you are posting the invoice so there should be a separate user who should actually post it but the verification part the entering the mandatory information and all everything should be entered by the ap team for example and they should park those invoices and there will be a separate team which is a super user team who is responsible or who can process the invoices and post the invoices in the system so that is what we call it as a parking process now this parking process is something which is a big no whenever your client is recommending no i want a pro parking process in the system now why why we should say no to the client for the par parking process because the invoices are itself is parked in the vim right then what is the meaning of having the parking process again in the vim uh, in the vim screen so we should always say no for the parking process and even though the newer uh, uh, vim functional or newer vim versions basically are not having the parking process at all they have completely removed it now but in the previous version there were still the parking process but the parking process is something basically is uh, like we shouldn't go ahead Uh, and uh, we we should always say client that we uh, the invoice itself is in the parking process its invoice is still not posted and someone is already doing that those validation 
so then there is a no meaning of putting the parking process at all okay so create a role under product code 005 and lix is two of the important thing so uh, like 005 product code is something basically which we use it till invoice posting and lix product code we use it for the invoice blocking now what is this transaction code slash and slash opt slash cp underscore 965 so let me just open the screen now so this is the if you see here change view role maintenance okay so this is the place basically where we create the role id in the system now there are so many role ids are coming here uh, now again as i said that this is the ids server so in your client basically you will not find it out now what are those standard ones so indexer you will find it out info provider you will find it as a standard one buyer also you will find it as standard one ap processor this is also you will find it as a standard one okay so these are the few standard product code basically whenever you are going with the fresh implementation this these are the standard uh, roles basically which open text will give it to you now for example uh, i will just try to create one role so i will just take a copy of the existing one so now here comes about the product code this is what i was talking about a 005 product code is something basically which we use it uh, like till invoice posting which is a majority of the cases where you need to uh, assign the role under the product code 005 so like for example i will just add z before this and press enter now here i will now save it so i have created the role zap_processor_b okay now the next thing is once we create the role so here we haven't put any logics and all okay there are different um, steps basically which we need to follow so first step is to create the role id now the second step is template id and template id transaction code is slash opt slash cp underscore 9cx2 okay i will again put slash n before this so so i will now execute this particular transaction code so this is the product role template configuration okay now here uh, if you see here the dialog structure so the first dialog structure is the product role template configuration uh this is a place basically where we assign the role id and the template id which is a third step so that i will discuss it later on so let's go to the template definition first now uh this is the place basically where we use uh like sorry uh yeah so this is the place basically where we create the template id in the system now when we create a template id in the system so open text has given three different template types it's three okay three different template types so the first template type is the first template type is field based template type
सेकेंड वन इज ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल यूनिट बेस्ड टेबलेट टाइप एंड द थर्ड वन इज द फंक्शनल बॉड्यूल बेस्ड टेम्पलेट टाइप ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टेम्पलेट विच ओपन टेक्स हेज गिवेन सो वेन एवर वी क्रिएट अ टेम्पलेट आई डी we need to select any of these template type now what are these different types of um, uh, template uh, template uh, template types in the system what is the functionality and for which role we should select the which particular template type now the field based template type the field based template type is something basically a uh, field based template type is something basically where i want to do the bifurcation based on the sorry i want to do the bifurcation of the users under the same role based on the specific field okay now what does that mean i have created one role of ap processor which is a zap underscore t okay we are having 1000 company code which is for india and there is another company code which is uh, which is 2000 for uk okay now how my ap team is designed in the system my ap team is designed in the system in such a way that for india there is a separate ap team and for uk there is a separate ap team okay so for india for example user 1 there are two ap users user 2 for uk it is user 3 and user 4 so user 3 and user 4 are the one who is actually responsible to process the invoices for uk country and user 1 and user 2 are responsible to process the invoices for india so what does that mean that if we are not having a centralized team then we should go with the field based template type so field based template type here will be the company code so based on the company code my users are getting changed so how system comes to know like system come will come to know based on the company code so based on the company code it will say okay assign this uh, these are the users basically who is responsible to process this invoices so this is the concept of the field based template type now uh, the uh, then then we have a organizational unit based template type organizational unit based template type will be used when we are having a centralized team so centralized team when i am saying which means like for example mdm team okay so now my mdm team irrespective of which country the data it belongs to or the document belongs to so i am just putting it as a user 5 user 6 user 7 user 8 user 9 and user 10 so what i have done here is so i understood from the business 
that my MDM team who will be my MDM team. So it will be a centralized team. So irrespective of uh, the uh, like the company code and all, uh, like uh, uh, like any of these users can process uh, can work on that particular document. And if they want to update anything in the master data, they can update it. So then in such cases, basically we assign it to the we we create a one role and assign a multiple users under the same role. There we use the concept about the org unit based template type. Now one question to you guys. Um, can my AP team uh, also be used as organization unit based template type? Or not? No. I guess yes. We can, right? Yeah. Because it is up to us basically. There could be a chance we can have a centralized team who is working for all the company codes. Right? So we can, for my AP team, I can, based on the business requirement, I need to just select it that which is the most suitable way. Like if we are having a centralized team, they will say that my AP team is not bifurcated based on the country or company code. Then we can go with the organization unit based template. Right? Okay, now the the another question like can my MDM team be considered as a field based template type? Yes. It can be right based on the my business requirement it can be and we can do it. So this is something which we need to understand during the requirement gathering. So how we want to create a rules and how do we want to bifurcate. Okay. Now the third template type is a functional module based. Functional module based template type is the dynamic in nature. Now what does it mean dynamic in nature? And what type of roles basically we can consider for a functional module based template type? Can anyone like like the name itself suggest but can, can create one? I can create one function with uh, that define uh, one logical statement to uh, associate the user, the, the, the document to a specific user in certain circumstance, right? I, I could define, for example, a document uh, with PO uh, from uh, India it's for this kind of uh, group of uh, the user, right? I, I can create logical, uh, customized logical. Hmm. You are talking about AP team? What? You are talking about AP team role or uh, in generic you are saying? Uh, no, in, in the other kinds, <laughs> in, not uh, in no, AP I think Your point is correct. Uh, but the point here is, uh, see, uh, we can create a role and the open text also gives the standard functionality of the field base and organization unit base. Okay. So I completely agree. Uh, like we can also go with the functional module base, create one custom table and assign the multiple users uh, accordingly in the system and try to pull those information based on the company code and, uh, company code and all. But those are the customizations. But what is the uh, the uh, the exact reason and the exact standard function module which OpenTex has given uh, for which roles uh, for the function module based template type? So that is something which we need to understand it. Uh, so the buyer role, okay. Now buyer or requester, right? Correct. Buyer or requester, correct. Mm -hmm. So buyer or role or the requester roles are dynamic in nature. When I'm saying dynamic in nature, then what does that mean? 
could be a different uh, person. What I mean is a uh, request, for example, I can define uh, by logical uh, that uh, I will assign the document for the creator of the PO, for example. Correct. Yes. No, you, you are correct. So that's what I'm coming here. So now just tell me, uh, like everyone, I am just creating one. Let's remove the request right now. So I am just creating one role with the buyer. Okay. And these are all the buyers associated in the organization. User 11, user 12, user 13, user 14. Okay. Now, can you tell me, can I uh, create uh, like, or can I select the organization unit based template type and assign all these users to the buyer? or field based template type uh, and assign all the users to this particular buyer role. Is it something which we can do it or which we should do it or not? What do you think? If I am an AP processor, I am processing one invoice, I need certain information from the buyer. Who will be my buyer? Like to whom should I reach out to them? Should I assign it to all the users? All the users can be my buyer for the same purchase order? No, right? So that is the dynamic in nature. My buyer role is a dynamic in nature where whoever has created the purchase order, that will be my buyer basically. Right? So system should go, whatever the PO number is there, system should go find it out that this is my buyer basically who like who has created the purchase order and only to them I can send the invoice, uh, send, send, uh, uh, send that particular document and asking them to provide certain information. But I can create one group of buyer. Uh, what I mean is, uh, in a settings, in a configuration, you can choose one unique user or a group of user. Uh, by the function model, uh, can I uh, assign for a group of buyers? Uh, I, I'm no. talking because, uh, for no, example, uh, no, but the we are buyer... not supposed to assign a group because buyer for one document there cannot be hundreds of buyer available it is only I, I'm, talking, I'm talking yeah, because yeah, there is one concept uh, for approval that uh, i can approve uh, for the other person right for the other person the buyer for example if the buyer is on holiday uh, the document so will still <laughs> Yeah, that is a separate concept. I think let's not go into that topic. I will discuss it. That is a substitute management which you are talking about. Yeah. Okay. So that is that is not related to the role. The role okay. itself says the buyer role is something basically whoever has created the purchase order will be my buyer. And that is something which is dynamic in nature. We cannot assign all the users in us one buyer role. Buyer role here we have to assign the function module where system should go and check it out who has created the purchase order and treat it as a buyer only okay yeah okay which you are talking about about the approval that is a separate topic that is a bigger topic that that we will discuss it later on okay okay, okay that is a substitute part which you are talking about okay so my buyer I cannot assign multiple users under the buyer role. We should only assign a function module which should like there is a logic basically which will be written in the function module which will go and find it out who has created the purchase order. So that we that will be considered as my buyer. Open text has given the standard function module. So you don't have to create a new uh, uh, new row, uh, sorry, uh, new function modules and all. Everything is available as part of the standard configurations. Yeah, 
there could be a chance now here i'm just giving you one customization part where your client can come up by saying that do one thing my buyer will not be like my po creator cannot be my buyer there is a contract basically which is created uh, uh, like which is created and uh, uh, under that contract uh, whoever has created that particular contract will be my uh, will be treated as a buyer so then we have to go with the customization creating a custom function module and uh, and then based on it find it out who has created the contract does that make sense to everyone yeah okay great <clears throat> so now uh, so i think we have discussed about all the three different types of template type right so these are the ways basically so these are the create a role first and second the create a template id with any of these different template types and the functionality of these template type we have discussed it in the downside okay now what i am going to do here is uh, Let me find something. So. okay so uh, now basically this is the one basically template id which is a uh, uh, which is available here so here uh, so now how to create everything and all so i will just select this and click on copy as and then i can i need to assign uh, i need to create a template id so like for example zap underscore doc underscore t so this is let me put the b11 also okay so this is the one and ap processor b12 b11 sorry and then this is the field template type which i was talking about okay the function module based organizational unit and the field based okay so these are the three different template types which we have which we, which i was discussing with you so like for example we are going with the ap processor with the field based template Uh, the reason why i am showing you only the field ways because uh, there is uh, organizational unit and function module is a little bit uh, easier uh, but a field ways is something basically which we need to understand it and i want to show you something there so that is the reason why i want to uh, i am just going with the template type as field ways as of now and then we have allow uh, allow the uh, like allow pd org here and then once i have done it just press enter click on copy all okay now here this is a template id once we select the field based template type okay then we have to go to the we have to select this and click on the template fields now what exactly we will do it in this template field since it is a field based template right so what i have discussed with you guys here is that for example my ap processor so i need to do the bifurcation of the users based on the company code right so field based template type will be used when i want to do the bifurcation based on a specific field so for example the company code in majority of the cases it will always be a company code only okay so here in the template fields basically we need to put that what is the reference table so uh like the company code data basically stored in T double zero one table in SAP. Okay, so T double zero one. If I just open this, so this is the company code details. Okay, so if I just execute this, I can see a company codes available here, and this is the company code 
फील्ड नेम फील्ड सो कंपनी कोड फील्ड टेक्निकल नेम इज बुक्रेस बी यू के आर एस सो दिस इज समथिंग बेसिकली वी नीड टू असाइन इट हेयर and allow ranges allow wild card so this is something basically which we will check in after this we will go to the template field details and in the template field details since we are going to use this template id for the product code this and the object type as slash opt slash v1001 which is for vim and the company code is company code for example we are using that company code attribute so here this is the company code attribute which we are selecting it and after this we will just save it once we save it so here this is the one right which you have created yeah so this is a template id let me just put it here also where is it so we have created a role we have created a template id with more, uh, with the template type as field based now what is the third step the third step is to pre to sorry to assign template id to role id okay now whatever we have created so far we have to assign it so that system uh, now how with the linkage will be done right so to for the linkage and all we have to assign the template id to the role id so where should we do it so the transaction code is slash and slash opt slash cp underscore 9 cx 2 okay so the same transaction code which we need to use it so if i just execute this transaction code then the screen will come and once the screen has come then this is the place basically here if you see the first column is a product code second column is a role id responsible party is nothing it is a role id which we have created in 9cx5 and this is the template id which we have created in 9cx2 so i will just select the first one for example and click on copy as yes. so this is the 005 product code what is that role id which we have created this one okay and what is the template id which we have created this one okay now it's done let me just quickly check it whether it's coming perfectly fine yes it's coming fine and the status is active now i will just save it okay can you see like our role zap underscore processor underscore b this has be, i have assigned it to the template id zap underscore proc underscore t underscore b like thanks for watching the video for full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.